Sean Smith took what is widely regarded as the most spectacular mark in football history. The same Sean Smith also took numerous brain-jarring knocks during his VFL-AFL career, with alarming and ongoing consequences. Hi, Sean. Did the triumphs and the positives outweigh the negatives? I've been asked that quite a few times. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess you, in some regards you go, yeah, the damage done now. You go, well, was it worth it? But in some regards it is worth it. You know, it was, it was part of my life. It sort of shaped who I am and... Um, had some great fun along the way as well, but obviously the ongoing uh, problems is, is you know, something you'd probably go, well, mate, was, was it worth it or not? And those ongoing problems are to do with concussion and the effect on your brain? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been an ongoing thing for probably the last seven or eight years. Um, you know, sort of going through a bit of depression and, um, you know, some crazy thoughts and things like this. And What's that mean? Oh, you know, self-harm and stuff, mm. uh, which you're not proud of. Um, you know, you sort of don't want, you know, to even think that. Just thinking it is, is, uh, is not a good thing. But, you know, if, um, you know, I've had some brain tests done and there's, there's some damage done to, to my brain and it's basically through concussions. And they attribute that to football, yeah. Yeah, well, I haven't been knocked out anywhere else. No, you know? no. Um, and I, I did get knocked out quite a few times. Brett Allison, your long-time friend and teammate yep, who came pretty. down from Canberra with you all yep. those years ago, he said you had ridiculous courage. And I think most of us would agree with that. I, I can never remember a time when, if you saw the ball, that you didn't just go for it. Yeah, and I, I used to wear that with a badge of honour. So that was the way I played. You know, and, you know, I was a big believer, you know, you could, you know, get knocked out ten times and, you know, don't go hard once and people remember that forever. Yep. I guess that was in my head. Um, you yeah, know, I did crunch my body a fair bit but you know that's just the way I played and it's sort of hard to get that out of you you can't you, you can't pick and choose which one you want to go for hard at and just see the ball get ball sort of thing how many concussions do you think that you've had over the journey I mean, uh, you played at North Melbourne yep Werribee in the then VFA yep. uh, and Melbourne and then back to Werribee so there's a lot of football along the way yeah exactly um, I don't know the exact number but you know, I've talking to a few people from the past and, you know, who watch games and my mum and all this sort of thing and and sort of, we sort of worked out maybe got knocked out 12 times. 12 times. Um, and you're talking about being... Cold. Cold, yeah. Cold, yeah. 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 Um, and then probably another 20, 30 concussions, maybe more Gee. on top of that. Sub-concussive, you know, sub-concussive ones. Um, yeah. So there could be more. I don't know. You don't sort of keep tally of those things, mm. I guess. A concussion sort of affects your memory anyway. <laughs> a few of your mates say that they they think that your personality has changed along the way. Is that fair? Yeah, it has. Um, the the hardest, the the biggest eye opener for me on that. I, people said that I said no, I haven't, no, I haven't. But New Year's, I was up there. My, my dad passed away last year, and I was spent a fair bit of time in Canberra with Mum, just look, looking after and. And mum had actually said, you've, you've changed. I've noticed in the last five years you've actually changed. And when your mum says that, yeah. she, does, she, know. she knows you're the best. Yeah. And that's, that's when the rule sort of a bit of a... You sort of go, wow, yeah, maybe there's something wrong here, you know, um, which is not good. How deep was the depression? Oh, pretty bad, yeah. Oh, I, I had, uh, had a crack at a few pills to try and sort of make the pain go away. Mm. Um, the pain, you're talking about physical pain or the, or the, just the, the mental, mental pain? Just mental, just had enough, you know, it was, it's, it's, it's just not a good place to be. Um, yeah, and I know a good friend of mine, Wayne Swass has obviously been through that as well. And he's a great advocate for, for mental health, um, you know, issues and stuff and does a fantastic job. And, um, you know, I spoke to Swatter quite a few times about it and, um, you know, just you just get good friends around you, mm. and you know, and some good medication as well. Is that um, self medication or under the? Uh, oh, no, under under the strict doctor, doctor yeah, yeah, doctor's medication. I, I'll probably take that for quite a long time now. I don't know. I really don't know. I might have to take it the rest of my life. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes down the track. But um, you know, yeah, it's, it's not a good place to be, and. It's sort of up, one, you know, one, one time you're up, then you're down and up and down a fair bit. And yeah, last year, last year I actually thought I was going, I was going nuts. Last really? Year. Yeah, yeah, just, just the way you think, and I know it's, it's, it's really hard to put you, put your, I, I couldn't put an answer to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I said I had some um, 
through a good mate of mine, Peter Jess. Obviously, yep. he's he's running the, the case uh, for the concussion, and um, Alan Pierce did some testing on me, and um, yeah, there's some definite brain damage there. So it's what does what does going nuts mean? I think I know if we're talking in a public bar, I know what you meant. But what does it what did it mean to you? <sighs> just just angry, like yeah. you know, I, I'm a really easy going guy, um, and. You know, I'm pretty laid back, and sometimes pe people think I should be, you know, a bit more, <laughs> more enthused. But I, I'm actually just really calm and collective most of the time. But um, just getting angry at the drop of a hat, and mm. you know, and just having these these silly thoughts and just of hatred, and I don't know, it's hatred directed at whom? I just anything that was in your way, or sometimes it was. It's, it's hard to it's hard to describe, Mike. And mm. just thinking, this isn't me. What what am I doing? You know. You know, staying in bed for three days. Really? You Literally know? staying in bed for yep. three days? Three days. Yep. Did so you fear then what might come of you? I mean, you're obviously in charge of your own destiny, but were you worried about what course you may take from there? Oh, it, yeah, that's it. It's always worried about that and, and just think, I've got to get out of bed. I've got to get out of bed. And then it's, sometimes it's a really hard thing to do. Mm. Um, that's at the worst. Um, so your your north mates will find that hard to believe. Those that haven't seen you recently, yeah. all of them have said to me yep. that you are warm, positive, happy-go-lucky yep. bloke. Hundred percent. And I still am that. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm not walking around like an angry human being the whole time. It's just especially when stress is involved, and um, you know, it's yeah. I just don't have seem to have the patience anymore. Are you angry that you played football? No, I'm not. No, no, I'm not. There was, you know. It's just the way it is. You know, I was just some people get lucky, some people do five knees, you know, and, mm, and mm. it's just I'd, I'd never heard a knee. I never had a recall on a knee. So it's, I guess it's just the way it is. You can't sort of have regrets, I guess, in that regards because you, you can't go back. So. I want to know how you felt when you saw Sean Higgins playing for one of your old clubs, North Melbourne, mm -hmm. after that heavy hit he took against Hawthorne. Yep. He's back playing two weeks later. Yep. And playing very well, but yeah. I know your view about this is that a concussion case should lead to at least a four-week break. Oh, I just think it's... It, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a doctor, and, I, you know, I, people are going to say that, and, you know, what do you, you know what you're talking about, but oh, I just reckon if you get... Like, it was such a big hit. It was like he was... And he had a neck problem as well, and he had a, uh, obviously, facial... Um, with his, his lip, lips, yeah. With his yeah. lip open and stuff, so it was a decent hit. And to play two weeks later, I just think your brain can't um, repair itself well enough, I don't reckon. And it's, if, if he was to get another hit that game, um, things, you know, things could go wrong for him, you know. Um, just have a look at Liam Picken at the Doggies. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's in a bit of trouble because he, he played through some concussions last year mm. um, and, it, and it, it does long-term damage. When we talked about the Higgins situation earlier, you were, you were angered by it. Yeah, it does. It, it because we meant to have this concussion policy, um, you know, which is great and all that sort of thing. And I reckon they've done well with the cleaning up of the game, of the front on contact and the head high and all the cheap stuff. I reckon they've, they've done a pretty good job of that. But I'm not not saying in football you're not going to get hit in the head. It's it's a contact sport, and it, but it's how you manage it and uh, for your long term health and to get knocked out like that and then, and play two weeks later. I don't see that as Looking after your health. Paddy McCartan? Yep. He's another one? Yep. yep. And he's got a history, hasn't he? Yeah. Got to get rid of the stigma of, you know, toughen up. Yeah. All that sort of thing. Yep. You know, uh, I guess it's something you really can't see. But yeah, it's just one of those things you just have to, I think, take out of the player's hands and, and, and you know, say you're not playing for the next three weeks, four weeks, whatever. If, if you were the match review officer... Yep. And the Nick now the Newey case came before you. What would your decision have been? I don't think that's a report. I don't think it is. Yet it's, it Carl was... Amon was concussed in that incident. It's a. Yeah, I, I don't know the actual ruling what they've gone by with that. But well, I'm I'd... talking about you and your knowledge of concussion and the effect of head. Oh, I'm not saying that as soon as someone gets concussed, um, it's a free kick or a report. There are. Accidents in footy, you know, there's things are going to happen. Um, but I, th I thought the Nick Nat no, yeah, it was fairly forceful tackle, but it was a push in the back. 
maybe a fine, maybe a work. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not really up to date. Great area, isn't it? Oh, it, it? It is. I feel sorry for Nick. All he did was tackle someone. He mm. wasn't malicey trying to hurt them. Um, you know, and you, you don't like seeing anyone get concussed. I can tell you that right now. Mm. I, as soon as I see people get concussed, I just I feel for them. Well, Carl Amon said later that he thought he was OK and then he was in a fog. So yep. clearly there's been some impact on his brain. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so you're, you're almost the standard month off if you're concussed. Well, I think the boxing industry, if you get knocked out when you're boxing, you have a month off. Mm. Why, why is that? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. You know, obviously, they're, they're right on top of that sort of thing. You've got a, a boy playing football at Melbourne? I do, yes. What, how do you um, feel about him playing at AFL level? with the risks involved. You should ask his mother that, really. Um, <laughs> she's horrified him playing football because he, he was playing he was playing basketball yep. at the Geelong Supercats in the Seaball League, which is a high standard and he was he was a good basketballer. But Joel just wanted to play footy, so I can't stop I can't stop the son playing football. Were you pleased when he said he wanted to play footy? I had mixed emotions in some regards, yeah, cuz I, I I think he was he was destined for a good basketball career. Um, but, yeah, if it makes him happy, I'm happy. Um, yeah, and he went to Melbourne, obviously, which was, which made it a lot easier yeah, for me because, yeah. obviously, they're, they're a great club and I'm an ex-player and stuff. So, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, but, I, I mean, I, I, love, I love watching him play because he, he's a good athlete and it's good watching him run around, but, yeah... He's got a bit of father in him, hasn't he? Well, injury. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He gets injured injury, quite but, easily. But uh, round one last year, did he take that big... Uh, yeah, he's, big he's chest mark and then wrecked his shoulder. Yeah, exactly as I said, he's got me in me. He yeah. got injured in the first 20 minutes of his first game. Um, people reckon he runs like me, but he runs like me, but in fast forward, he, he's got me covered for speed and, and athleticism. He's, he's a good athlete. Um, Did you need to convince his mother to allow him to play? No, no not really, no, because Joel just wanted to do it. And as I said, we, if he wants to do it, we can't stop him. What about your daughter, Amy? She's a pretty good sports person too. Yeah, she, she's a good basketballer. Um, it's funny, we... Uh, <laughs> Amy was thinking about playing basketball, uh, playing football, because I was coaching at the St Killer Sharks in the women's league. And on the way into the game, Joel's first game, we're talking about it, and Amy goes, yeah, I might come down to training and have a run around. And, of course, Joel goes down the first 20 minutes and we're in the rooms and uh, he's... Uh, his mum walks up and goes, there's no way Amy's playing but <laughs> football at all. No way at all. And I go, yeah, fair enough. And she meant that. And she meant that. Yeah. She said it was such passion. Yeah. Well, you're now an assistant coach at Richmond. Yep. In the AFLW. Is it AFLW or VFLW? VFLW. V yeah. So are you subtly trying to talk her into having a crack at Richmond or have you now uh, uh, accepted that she won't play? I don't think she'll play, no. Oh. I don't think she will. You prefer coaching girls than blokes, don't you? Yeah, I've, I've, I've said, I've, you know, obviously, Kate's at Richmond. I, I'd said to Kate, oh, I don't think I'll ever coach men's footy ever again. Uh, I just love coaching the girls. Why? Um, one, because they, they, they listen, which is a big thing. You know, they're like just big human sponges. They just take on information and go and do it. Um, obviously, you're dealing with a little bit of different emotional set in some regards. Mm -hmm. So you have to do alter your, tr your training and uh, the words you use and, and, and stuff. But apart from that, it's, it's fantastic. And you know, gratitude is, is a big thing. After every training session, not that you're after gratitude the whole time, yep. all of them go, thanks for taking training, thanks yeah. for taking, thanks for doing this, thanks for doing that. You go, well, you know, thanks for bringing the water out to the trainers. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. it's just go, wow, that's it's pretty special. Given your sensitivity to the concussion issue, do you have to um, try to educate them about how they attack the footy. Yep, I've um, yeah. Well, we've had a couple of con one concussion at training, just an accident, and she wanted to play. And, and good thing about the the, the doctors, um, Beck, the doctor there, she's she's based in the same boat as me. She just said, no, you're not you're not training, you're not playing for this amount of time. And then and she had had some time off, which was would, great. Would you impose yourself on those discussions if you thought that someone had been seriously hurt and was going yep, to come back? Definitely, and play? I'd put my two bobs in because they know where I've where I've come from in mm -hmm. that regards. And I guess it's one thing reading a textbook and you know doing all the studies, but I've I've lived it unfortunately. Mm. But um, yeah, so it, it it's not now. It's 
10, 15 years, 20 years down the track that it's... It'll yeah, so I was just... The last, I was just going to ask you about that. Do you fear that there's going to be sort of an outbreak of concussion cases in the next generation? You know, we, we're aware of you, Greg Williams, Johnny Platten, John Barnes, the names have become familiar, and now Liam Pickin and Paddy yep. McCartan. Yep. It seems to be the thin edge of the wedge and there's a, oh, a wave coming. There's, there's, there's a lot of guys who I know um, who are just... Just, you know, the good thing about what's happened, us coming out about this sort of stuff, is that it started a conversation, you know, and I've talked to many people, you know, and ex-players that I've, you know, I've uh, played with Nor, hadn't seen for years, and I, and I say, how are you going? Oh, I'm struggling, you know, and I've had to be on some heavy medication to, to stop their mood swings and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and these guys got knocked out a fair bit. So, yeah, there's, there's be a lot out there, and it'd probably be worse at local level because they don't get, mm. better, they, they get lesser care than they do in the AFL. Sean, you've donated your brain, have you not? You promised have, your brain yes. to the, uh, yep. the brain bank. Yep. Uh, you, Diesel's another one. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's because you believe that they'll see the damage and, and hopefully find the origin of it. Yep. and perhaps improve the treatment? Well, they're, they're looking for a thing called CTE, um, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Yeah. I think I said that right. Um, which is going to be diagnosed after, um, after, after death. So I don't need my brain anymore when, <laughs> when, you, when, when you die. I hope they don't need any time soon. Um, but, yeah, they, they want to try and just work out how, one, to treat it or how to diagnose it while still alive, I'd say, you know, and try and stop this thing because it's something that doesn't show up on MRIs or scans. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it, you know, drives, you know, and basically rewires your brain, you know, and it's it just, it's not not a good thing. Would a helmet have helped? No, nah, no. Nah. Helmets, helmets are great to stopping, like, lacerations and, and it will take a little bit of impact away. But if you get hit hard enough, there's still inertia going through your brain and your brain rattles inside your head and, and the fluid that's in and really it's not going to really help that much. What was the worst of the many heavy knocks you took to the head? <sighs> oh, you had was, a big one in Canberra, didn't you? I had one in Canberra, yeah. One in Canberra. I, um, it was a pre-season game against the Swans and I just went across to Shepherd and I won't say who it was, but, but obviously elbowed me straight in the, the, the side of the neck and um, lights went out. And yeah, I've um, yeah, they actually thought I might have broken my neck that day because it was so swollen. And but I, I was I was crook for a long time. I remember being in the showers after that game. I just I'd never felt so crook in my whole mm. life. Um, and yeah, and you, I know you said you won't tell me who it was. Is this is the footballer's code, isn't it? Because you're entitled to resent that, aren't you? Oh yeah, I mean I, I've 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 seen this player in the past. I, I, Afterwards, and we sort of joke about it, but and he, he regrets what he did. Mm. But um, I don't want to sit here and sit there and tell him, you know, who it is. So that's that's fine. Okay. Um, we should talk about. You weren't a bad footballer, actually, <laughs> before all this stuff befell you. Um, 109 games with uh, with North and Melbourne. Yep. Your best year was at Melbourne, wasn't it? 1995. Yeah, 95. Yeah. Yeah. You 51 goals that year. Yeah. Yeah, how Gary, I don't know. Gary Lyon wouldn't have liked that, would he? <laughs> <laughs> Playing alongside Gaz. Yep. And using him as the step ladder in that uh, that famous mark. Yes. Um, yeah, I guess he's he's pretty sick of that. I think old Gaz. Yeah. How, how high off the ground do you reckon you were? Got any idea? Ah, uh, well, Gaz is six four. Six three, yeah. Six four, yeah. six three, and my feet were on his shoulders. Well, there you go, mate. There. Now, the amazing thing about after I came to terms with the fact that you'd done that. Then the next thing I remember was Gary rubbing the back, the back of his head. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't overly happy, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> have you ever been higher than that? Um, allegedly at uh, at Werribee. I played at Werribee in 90, uh, 94 the year before. Yep. And a game against Box Hill. I took took one, uh, which allegedly is on video. I haven't yep. seen it, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty good one. And you most, haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, no. You have, have you sought it? Have you, uh, I've tried to, but they've, uh, there's have been a few guys that have had the tape, but I've, whether it exists, I don't know. Maybe it might be a bit of a folklore. I don't know. So do you believe that was uh, you went higher that day? Well, I, I felt like I did. Really? Yeah. Where did that come from? That, just this natural ability to jump, is that that's all? 
I guess it's it, there's a natural ability to jump, but also you've got to have the timing and the you know and the sea ball and run and get it, you know, as opposed to trying to jump, thinking about it. You just do it naturally. And I guess I, I learned to uh, I learned to take marks. Mum had this jasmine vine against the fence. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd throw this little footy and I'd take speckies on top of this jasmine vine and fall on the ground going, oh, mark of the year, mark of the year, and all that sort of stuff. And by the end of, end of winter, the, the jasmine would be absolutely wrecked and then it would grow better over, over uh, summer and repeat the process all over again. You reckon you can teach yourself to jump, do you? Well, yeah, I reckon you can. It's, I mean, you've got to have the jump as well, but you've got yeah. to have the timing. Yeah. Um, my son can jump higher than me, but can he? and he's had a couple of leaps at footy, but he's got no near, nowhere near the footy yet. So, but he just needs that um, that just bit of training, I guess, just to put everything in one in one motion and, and go for the ball. Your injuries now. There's a batch of concussions which we've talked about. Yeah. Yep. Um, did you break an arm? Broke an arm twice. Yeah. yeah. Um, Both the, shoulders. Yep. And what about the lacerated liver? Yeah, I ruptured my liver. Um, ruptured it. Ruptured, yeah, I had a 13 centimetre hematoma in my liver. Um, yeah, I've just got basically shirt fronted, which in today's game would be eight to ten weeks, what happened. Really? But, but yeah. that was part of the game, you know. So what, you were hit with what, an elbow or a knee? Or? Shoulder, just hip and shoulder. Just hip and shoulder, yeah. yeah. And that concussed me as well. Um, if I ever thought I'm going to die on a footy ground, that was the day. I, I just couldn't breathe because yeah. I was winded that bad. Um, but it wasn't until two days later that I've... Uh, Waking up Monday morning and the pain had shifted from the front to the back of my ribs and, and then Brett, Brett Allison was living with me at the time and said, Fruity, can you push on my back some? He's pushing on my back, probably making it worse when I think about it. And, uh, and he went off to work. I said, I'm right. And then within half an hour, I, thought, I don't know, it's the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Mm. Um, so instead of calling an ambulance, I called John Longmire, who lived around the corner. Did you? Why I didn't call an amps? I don't know. I put put that well, poor Dr. horse. Doctor Longmire. Get Doctor Longmire around and poor horse. He had to come around and I'm in a fetal position on the ground and so he's rushed me down the the Tuller freeway and it, when it used to be two lanes um, and I think he's doing about 140 in the emergency lane and yeah I was, I was pretty sick boy. I spent a few weeks in hospital and really yeah. Um, yeah, so horse. I'm sorry about that. 1995 was the uh, the mark that we've talked about. Yep. 51 goals. You kept yep. three bags of five that year. Yeah. Hmm. So what did you learn? You, you away from North Melbourne. You had four or five years there, and then two seasons at Werribee. No, I had one season at Werribee. Only one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. In '94, I had seven at North, and then um, yeah, then one at Werribee, and then four. four at and you, ca you came back a better player. I did. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ten times better player. Just stronger in the body. Um, I did a really good pre-season at Essendon that year. Um, hoping to get on the list and obviously that was the year after their, their flag and they only had one spot and I didn't get, didn't get picked up. So I've, Donald McDonald convinced me to go down to, to Werribee, yeah. good old Macca. Yeah. And which oh, I'm totally grateful to him for because it was a, it was a fantastic year. It was a really good year and um, uh, you know, I've kicked, I think, kicked 69 goals or something for that year and, and played some good footy and, um, and then yeah, I got redrafted. Mm. The North blokes loved you. I know you didn't sort of spend your entire career there, but um, Brett Allison told me the story of the training camp in New Zealand under Shimmer. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and Brett just couldn't go, couldn't go. You were, do you pick up the story? You were climbing a mountain, weren't you? Oh, we, we, we had to go over to New Zealand and we're in these mountains and we're at the bottom of this mountain. We couldn't see the top of the mountain because it was in the clouds. <laughs> you know, we're going, wow, that's a big mountain. And we're walking up this mountain and it was just relentless hours and hours of a gradient like this. Literally hours, yeah? Hours and hours and hours. And Brett's, Brett's not known for his endurance, I He's guess. He's a fast twitch man. He's a fast twitch <laughs> fibre man, yes, that's it. And, uh, and he's just like gone, no, nah, no, I'm not going, I can't move. I can't walk, I can't go anywhere. And we've gone... Come on, Brett, what are you going to do? He goes, no, nah, I'm staying here. <laughs> he was Adam. He was going to stay there. Mm. So literally we had to get behind him. It was like trying to push start a car and just get, once the feet started going again and, and away he went again and then, and then kept walking for another bit and had to push isn't him again. Funny, isn't it funny how people have different versions of events? Yeah. Now, you should know because you were there, but his version is that he fell off the back of the pack and he just couldn't go and yep. he was at the point, in his words, of hallucinating. Yeah, he was. He, yep. was, he was seriously, he just, he wanted to stay there. And I said, we can't stay here, yeah. mate. And you came back for him. Yeah. 
and dragged him up the hill. Yep, basically, yeah. yeah. Push, push started him up the hill. Just one more on, on Fruity, your mate Brett yep. Allison. Yep. He took the mark of the year, I think, at the MCG, wasn't it? Against uh, Collingwood, yep. yep. And you were in hospital recovering from your ruptured liver. Yeah. Yeah, well, Brett and I, we, we lived together for a bit and, you know, and um, obviously grew up in Canberra together and we used to go down to Queen's Park at Mooney Ponds and with Mark Hepburn and um, Dean McRae and these guys and we'd take, you know, we'd have, take specky practice and we'd, we'd... How we didn't injure ourselves, I don't know how we did it. You particularly. Yeah. <laughs> And so we always had this, co Brett and I had this competition, you know, who can take the better mark in a game, you know. And, and I'm, I'm sitting in hospital, feeling a bit sorry and sore for myself. And it wasn't on TV, it was in a televised game. And I think it might have been Rex Hunt or something on the radio. And, could, and Brett's taking this mark. And the, the radio's nearly exploded mm. with just, oh, you know, in the crowd. You could hear it and they could hear it replaying and replaying. I'm going, oh, what's he done? No, no, he's got me, he's got me. And... Brett came in after the game because I was in St Vincent's just around the corner and, and he goes, yeah, I think I've got you. I've gone, yeah, and I said, well, I'm going to take a better mark than you. Just watch me. And sure enough, the day, did. The day I did, yeah, Brett, Brett rings up me. He goes, yeah, you got me. You got so, me. Yeah. <laughs> Even though Brett's is really, that's one of the most underrated marks going around, I reckon, Fruities. I mean, I, I did ask, we started by me asking you whether the positives outweigh the negatives in this career. When you list all the downside, yeah. the uh, the things that have befallen you in that time, it, you must wonder whether it's worth it. Yeah, footy, footy was pretty cruel to me, I must admit. When you when you analyse it, um, the amount of injuries that I've had, the scars you've got all over your body, you know, just the, you know, the head knocks and that sort of thing. And, you know, and, you know, some of it was to early early in my career. I didn't. I don't think I trained as hard as I should have, and, and maybe got some injuries that way. Uh, but as I got older, you get a bit wiser. Mm. Um, um, you, know, you sit there. And I've, as I said, I've been asked that question before. Was it worth it? You know, and really, 109 games in 11 years of league footy isn't isn't a great return. But I, I guess I like to put it down as I, I was persevered and you know persevered mm. and persevered and hung in there and. Um, you know, I've met some great friends, you know, and, and as I said, it's shaped who I am and, you know, and I've, I've made some great, uh, some great friends and some great memories. Sean, I'm sorry about the plight that you found yourself in because, because of the nature of football and the way you played the game, but all of us would say you provided us with a lot of highlights over the journey. Thanks, Mike. Hopefully uh, everything's in order now and you're being looked after and things are going to get better from here. So yep. thanks for your contribution. Great to see you. Thanks, Mike. Cheers. Thank you.